Ah, uh, we see a train so seldom sure looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it just glides along. Makes you wish you were sitting in one of them nice cushioned seats, don't it? <laughs> I knew California couldn't stand a long trip like this. What you're talking about, I'm fresh as a daisy. I was just thinking of wore out you was looking. Ah, uh, never mind. We'll be in Wheeler in a few minutes and you can both relax. Say, Hoppy, this fellow, Tom Smith, that uh, wrote for you to come to Wheeler, did you say he was a railroad man? Uh, he's only the vice president of the line. Vice president? Oh. Hmm. Maybe he'll let me run one of them engines, huh? Maybe. <laughs> You better go after him. He's liable to get lost. I'll ride on in and see Tom. I told him I'd be in today. What kind it is? I don't know what kind, but it seems like it was something in the water. My wife's pretty sick. Well, let's see what we can do for her. Lee, where were you? I stopped this gentleman on the road, and he was nice enough to see if he could help us. Oh, I hope so. I feel so sick. I could die. No, you're not going to die, Mrs. Uh, Garvin. It's just a case of local wheat poisoning. Local wheat? Then it, it isn't it isn't deadly? No, but it is mean stuff and can make you awfully sick. I think I can give her something to make her feel better, though. Do you have some hot water without the local weed and some baking soda? Yeah, right here. Here's a clean glass. That's oh, fine. We drew this water yesterday before they, before someone put that stuff in the well. Well, you mean somebody deliberately put it in there? I sure do. Lee. Wait a minute. The railroad has a company hospital, hasn't it? Yes. You better ride over and see what they suggest in case this doesn't work. Why, I can't. My horse is sick. Well, you can take mine. But don't ride him too hard. He's had a big day. I'll watch it. I'll rush right back, honey. There we are. You drink this. And if that does what I think it's going to do, you'll feel better in a minute. And drink the rest of it, all of it. alongside of you. Hang it on like this. Is it my fault he don't like trains? Uh, hey, look. Hoppy. Where's Hoppy? Hey, you! Where's Hoppy? What are you doing with his horse? Come on, talk fast, mister. What's the matter? You all right, Hoppy? What you doing here? Well, these people are having a little trouble with local weed poisoning. Yeah? Anybody would have a tough time trying to steal your horse. Well, you won't need him now, anyhow. Mrs. Garvin's feeling much better. Fine. I'm really grateful to you. I wish you'd stay to supper with us. No, thanks. We're supposed to be in town by now. Hoppy, home cooking. He didn't invite you. Now you're all welcome. Be glad to have you. All right, we'll stay. What, another piece? Uh. <laughs> Young man, any time you want to quit railroading, I'll bet Hoppy will give you a job cooking for the Bar 20. I certainly would. The spot I, I might as well quit and accept the offer. Please, Lee. All right, I'm doing great. Well, you are. He's the best brakeman on the line. And someday he'll have a chance to advance. 
Well, why shouldn't he? I'll tell you why. Because a big shot called Tom Smith will see to it that I give up. Well, why should he do that? For the same reason he had one of his flunkies put loco weed in our well. No, Lee, you're wrong. No matter how Dad feels about our marriage, he'd never do anything to hurt us. Dad? You mean this Tom Smith's your pa? Yeah. The vice president's daughter ran off with a common brakeman. And what's the matter with that? Oh, Dad's awfully set and stubborn. But it just won't do him any good. Lee's going to stay on the job and show him. And I'd say with your help, he had a good chance of doing it, too. Now, oh, come on, boys. we better get into town. Will you excuse us? Leave that pie there. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy, for everything. And any time you buy this way, please stop and have supper with us. That's a promise. Whatever Hoppy says goes for us, too, ma'am. <laughs> all right, you're all invited. And don't think they won't come. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Don't get too close to her. She might bite. country you got up here. Never mind that. Get to work. Yeah, sure. I was going to finish it. There. And I'm afraid he's going to be busy for quite a while, too. <laughs> I hope Smith's secretary is pretty. You'll have to find out later. You're waiting out here. Don't try to tell me how to treat my own daughter. Shut up and take a letter. It's a fine way to talk to a girl. My dear Jesse, I'm giving you the one last chance to come back to your home. Hey, Tom. Tom Smith. Now, who and what in the... Oh, it's you, Hoppy. <laughs> how are you? I? I've been expecting you. We'll finish that last letter tomorrow. Type out the reports to one number seven. Right, Chief. Oh, Hoffy, this is Harmon Roberts, my secretary. Harmon, this is Hopalong Cassidy, one of my oldest friends. How are you? This is Lucky Jenkins. How do you do? See you both around later, I hope. Come right. on in, Hoppy. You mean he's the secretary? That's life on the railroad, Lucky. And there's been a series of accidents lately. And it seems they've all been directed at me. Well, I still don't see what that's got to do with your son-in-law. I know it's a terrible thing to have to say, Hoppy, but whenever those accidents happened, he was always somewhere close by. Hmm. Well, he didn't seem like that kind of a boy to me. 
Besides, why should he want to hurt you? Because I'm a rich man. And he knows Jesse will get it all when I die. Oh, I hope you're wrong. And how did you get so rich? I didn't know there was a lot of money in railroading. Well, there isn't actually, but I bought a piece of land last year. Land around here? No, 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 no. It's in Oklahoma. And it turned out to be in the middle of a new oil field. Oh, I see. And I suppose you told Jesse all about it? No, not a word. I never told anybody. But on the night after I received the news and the letter from the oil company, I was asleep in my room across the hall. Something awakened me. A noise of some kind here in my office. I jumped out of bed and rushed into the office. But I didn't get a good look at him. By the time I got my gun, he was gone. Roberts was too late to see him, too. But I didn't notice that he was a man about Lee's bill. And whoever he was, he was more interested in my mail than in robbery. Because the safe was still locked. I feel sure it was Garvin spying on me. Oh, I hope you're wrong for your daughter's sake. Have you told her what you think Garvin's up to? Why, no. Unless I could prove it to her, I'd be playing right into his hands, persecuting him. Well, if you feel that way about him, why don't you fire him? Same reason. Well, then I only have one suggestion I can make. What's that? She put three new men to work here. Thanks, Hoppy. I knew I could depend on you to help me. Where do you think I'll fit in best? Now, if you take this job as storekeeper, you'll be at a spot where you'll come in contact with a lot of grapevine gossip. Uh -huh. That's it. Ease her off. Now, take it slow. Now, you in the clear. Everything all right, bud? Let her bow. How about doing me a little favor? Sure, just name it. I'm running out of red signal oil. Will you get me a gallon from the storeroom? Red, you say? Yep, I got plenty of green. Red signal oil. Red signal oil. I'll get it. 25 feet of copper wire. Four valves. 12 holes connections. Check. You to tell the truth, I don't know much about that young Garvin. He don't talk a lot. You ever say where he's from? No, not that I've heard of. Hi there. <coughs> the foreman the engine wants some red signal oil. You got any? Red, huh? Well, I don't know if he's got any red oil left. I got some green signal oil. No, no, he's got plenty of green. After all, you got a red lights in the train, too. You sure do. Seems to me I've heard if you mix a bucket of steam with some green signal oil, it'll turn red. Isn't that right? You don't say. Sure enough. Here, you get me a bucket of steam and I'll show you. Well, I get it. Well, that engine over there is full of it. Sure. All you do is pull that little handle on the side and hold the bucket. Here. Just a minute. Just a minute. I have a cover on that bucket to keep the steam in. Oh, sure. <laughs> Hi, Garvin. I hear you're out on number eight. Yeah, I finally got a call. Hello, Lee. How's Jesse? Fine. Now she's over that local weed poisoning. Glad she's all right. I was lucky some cowmen happened along. There's one of them now, California Carson. What's he doing in the yards? He, Cassidy, and Jenkins are all working out here now. Working for the road? Those greenhorns? Why, certainly. They're friends of Smith's. That right, Roberts? I believe so. That's funny. All the time they were at my house, they never even mentioned they knew him. <laughs> Maybe they had a reason for keeping it quiet. What do you mean by that? Who does he think they are? He's just trying to get you riled up. Don't pay any attention. Yeah? Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Smith brought them here to check up on me so he could fire me if I made any slips. That's it, isn't it? I don't know, Lee. The old man hasn't said anything about it to me. No, he wouldn't, knowing you're a friend of mine. But he's not putting anything over on me because I won't stand for it. Wait a minute, Lee. I got to get a bucket full for the storekeeper. Well, trying to be funny. Well, I'll give you something to be funny with. Here's a rag. Take it and get up here. All right, but if the engineer don't get his red oil, don't blame me. Red oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hiya, Lee. I've been wondering when we'd see you. Oh, you have. Well, you and your pals can stop one him because I'm right here and you can mind your own business. What are you talking about? This. I don't know what this is about. If that's how you feel about it. I don't know. It just waded into me. I'll tell you, Cassidy, I don't like being spied on. What have you got to be afraid of? Nothing. Then you have nothing to worry about, have you? Did I see a scuffle going on here? A couple of boys sky liking bosses, no trouble. Just a rough house. There's been too much lack of discipline around here lately, Banks. Send your men back to work. Right. Back to work, man. Come on. And that means you too, Garvin. Don't think that you can take advantage of our relationship. Don't worry. I'm not any prouder of it than you are. Take it easy, will you, Lee? Why don't you fire me? That's what you'd like to do. No man is fired from my road without just cause. You can work here as long as you obey the rules. And as for you, Cassidy, you and your friends stay away from me. Keep out of my business. Glad that boy's so hot-headed, I can't help liking him. <laughs> and I thought you were a good judge of men. Too bad, Lee. I'm about at the end of my rope. I can't stand much more from him. Take that truck away. You all right, boy? I'm all right. Somebody started that truck rolling this way. Well, it kind of looks that way, Tom. What happened, Chief? I had my back turned and heard a crash. Roberts, did you see Garvin touch that truck? Well, Come on, speak up. Don't try to shield him this time. Well, he was leaning against it when I walked away, but I know if he started it rolling, it was an accident. I know better. Hoppy, this is the last straw. Oh, now, wait a minute, Tom. You can't prove that the man did that deliberately. Of course he didn't. I'm sure of it. All right, forget all about it. Get back to your work, Harmon. Yes, Tom, uh, Roberts and Lee, old friend. Why, no, they never met until after Jesse ran off with that fellow. To tell you the truth, I was hoping that she and Roberts would uh, hit it off someday. Well, I guess it's too late for that now. Got a new job, I see. Yeah, and a mighty important one, Johnny. Well, I sure hope you know how to run it. You think I've been monkeying with it? I didn't know how to... Never mind, we've got enough. You got enough? Find time to tell me. George, <laughs> I thought you knew how to run that thing. Oh, don't talk to me. I'm fixing to be talking to George Lee Wong. Come on, boy, your free ride's over. <laughs> Nothing funny about it. <laughs> well, that ain't my old pal number 3865. Wherever he's gone, that hobo's due to walk the rest of the way. Ben Watts, when'd you get out? About a month after you did. Never figured I'd run into an old cellmate. Crawl under again as soon as we get moving out. I'll get your boarded through car out of here. The main line's a few miles north. Don't bother me, boy. You know, uh, I'm sick of traveling. I uh, think I'll take it easy with you a while. But you can't. I'm married, and nobody around here knows I've done time. Well, no one should know, as long as you and I get along. What do you mean? Well, suppose you meet me in town. We'll talk it over. Oh, 
What a town. They roll up the sidewalks at nine o'clock. He's still sore because Robert wasn't the lady secretary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's unfair to the female sex. Why does a fella have to take a girl's job anyhow? Hey, you got a good question there. The answer might be very interesting. How's that help? Robert in a position to know everything that Smith does. Hi, fellas. Any of you seen Lee Garvin tonight? No, we haven't seen him. He generally goes home right after work. Oh, yeah? Good little boy, ain't he? Say, I could tell you plenty about... <laughs> well, if you see him, tell him Ben Watts is looking for him. Say, isn't that the hobo we saw Lee pull out of number eight this morning? Sure is. Can't mistake that polka dot scar. Wonder what he wants to see Lee for. Give me money. What do you suppose that's for? I don't know, but it'll bear watching. Well, why don't you two go to bed? You know, morning comes awful early on the railroad. You just ain't talking, Hoppy. I ain't missed the sunrise since I've been here. Come on, Hoppy. Suits me. How about you, Hoppy? Not a little later. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Good night, Hoppy. I don't want it. Oh, come on. I said I don't want a drink. I'm going home. Oh, just one drink and we'll both go home. To your house. There's your friend Garvin, but who's that hobo with him? Hobo is right. That's a rough looking customer. Look, man, why don't you act like a human being and let me alone? There's a freight out at 10 o'clock. Just one little drink and maybe I'll let you persuade me to go. We'll see. Come on. I think I'll have a talk with that hobo a little later. He's sober enough to talk. Oh, Hoppy. I'm so worried. Lee didn't come home to supper tonight. Oh, well, time doesn't mean anything to a railroader. They just stay until the job is finished. I suppose I am silly to worry, but I... Maybe you're not. Well, what do you mean? Jesse, before you and Lee were married, were you engaged to someone else? Someone that might be causing trouble? Why, no, I was never engaged to anybody but Lee. Not to Harmon Roberts? Oh, certainly not. Harmon was a good friend of mine. He likes Lee a lot, too. I thought I told you to keep out of my business. Lee Hoppy's trying to help. Yeah, he brought you here to check on me. But he didn't. You're wrong about that, Garvin. Oh, no, I'm not. That's what Tom Smith hired you for, spy work. Lee, that's not being very fair to Dad. That's right. Stand up for your father. I'm always wrong. Well, you are this time. Then why do you bother with me? Why don't you go back to your father and everybody will be happy? He didn't mean that. And he'll be sorry as soon as he cools off. I don't think so, honey. I am going to Dad. Jesse, I think you're making a mistake. But if that's what you want to do, do you mind if I go with you? No. between Lee and myself, dear. What's that good for nothing done to her now? Oh, it was just a misunderstanding, Tom, but I think it can be smoothed over. I guess it was partly my fault I was talking to Jesse. Well, why should that bother him? Well, he thinks I'm spying on him. Dad, may I go to my old room? Well, of course, my dear. Go on. Tom, I have something I want to discuss with you. He's waiting for you. Come on. Wake up. 
Here's a little drink for you. Oh, Garvin, where are you? Yeah, have a little drink. You get right along. He better be if he knows what's good for him. There you are. Where did you know Garvin before? And they go, I ain't talking to cops. He's gone. We never get anything out of him tonight. I think he'll be glad to talk all we want him to in the morning. You're on the wrong track suspecting Robert Toppy. He's a fine young man. All right, Tom. Forget I mentioned it. Now that Jesse's come to her senses, I, I don't think I'll need you any longer. Kind of looks that way. Sorry I bothered you, but thanks for everything. Oh, that part of it's all right, Tom, but they're both such nice kids. I hate to see them split up because of a misunderstanding. My mind's made up, Hoppy. I'm taking her east to forget this whole unpleasant episode. All right, Tom. My scalp is all. Who did it, Chief? Did you see him? No, I didn't have to see him. I can guess who it was. Oh, no, Dad. Surely you don't mean Lee. Go get Marshal Reardon. Get Marshal Reardon. Yes, sir. Help, somebody, help. Help. What's the matter, Robert? Somebody took a shot at the chief through that window. Did you hurt bad? Just a scalp wound, luckily. I'm going after Marshal Reardon. What's this on the ground? Looks like whoever took a shot at the boss dropped his scarf. I've seen that somewhere before tonight. I recognize those big polka dots. Why, well, that's the scarf for saw. Wait a minute. Listen. They come to think of it, I saw that on a hobo's neck tonight. Hobo, that's it. I saw him, too, in front of the saloon. He was talking loud. A kind of a tough-looking character. Well, that must be our man. Let's get after him. But where? When you saw him, Robert, who was he talking about? Uh, it was Lee Garvin. Uh, Garvin. Say, didn't he have a row with Smith today? I guess he did, but what's that guy? Look, let's get this over to the marshal right away, Roberts. And don't forget to tell him about Garvin talking to this hobo. Oh, but... If you don't do it, Roberts, I will. I ain't shielding any killer. Come on. All right, I'll go. Well, that's a fine piece of teamwork. Huh? Let's go talk to Lee and get the straight of this. You wait out here. No sign of the marshal yet, but if you see him coming, let me know. Sure, Huff. What do you want? I want some straight answers. I have nothing more to say than I said in town. I'm through. Where do you think you're going? First off, I'm going to go in and see my father-in-law and tell him what I think of him. Any objections? No, I haven't any objections. But you might run into the marshal. He's on his way out here. What for? To arrest you. Arrest me? Why? For hiring Ben Watts to shoot your father-in-law. Ben Watts shot the old man? They, they think I paid him to do it? I don't understand. Well, you were seen drinking with him and giving him money. That's right, I did. But it wasn't... It had nothing to do with the old man. Is he, is he badly hurt? No, it's just a scratch. But he's plenty mad. Seems like everybody's trying to throw everything at me. Now, that's where you're wrong, Lee. I'm trying to help you. But you've got to trust me and answer my questions. I'll try. All right, sit down. 
First, where's Ben Watts? I don't know. I left him drinking in the saloon last night before I met you and Jesse. Why did you give him that money, Lee? I wanted to keep him quiet about something. It couldn't have been about uh, prison, could it? How did you know? Never mind how. It is true, isn't it? All right, I'm a jailbird. No use trying to hide it any longer. Watts would have let it out anyhow. Did Watts follow you out here? No, it was my usual bad luck. He ran into me. Well, then he apparently didn't know Smith and had no reason for shooting him. No reason that I know of. Unless it was robbery. Oh, it couldn't have been. I examined the window and he hadn't even tried to raise it before he fired that shot through it. I don't understand it. Well, from what you've told me, Lee, I'm convinced that Watts had nothing to do with it. But somebody could have taken that scarf away from him and planted it under the window to throw suspicion on him. He didn't know a soul in town except me. That's why we got to locate Watts and find out who he talked to after you left the saloon. Engines. Man, you push. Wake up, wake up. The war's hey. over. No, it ain't like I'm here. Here comes the marshal and the deputy. The marshal's coming up the road. Get out of sight, Lee. I'll talk to him. Who? The cards. What? Too late, Reardon. Garvin's gone, eh? Yeah. The boys and I thought we'd stick around. He might come back. You stay out here and keep your eyes open. I'm going to take a look around inside anyhow. All right. Ah, Marshal. Want to take a hand of cards? No, thanks. I haven't got any time to waste. Ah, I guess he must have seen you fellows coming. Left his bag half-packed. pipe is this? Still hot? Well, that's uh, California's. Oh. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. It's mine. Mm -hmm. Smoked ever since I was nine years old. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess Garvin isn't coming back. So I'm going to move up into the hills and take a look around. Right, Marshal. So long, you fellas. So long. Come on out, Lee. He's gone. How do you feel? I don't know. Kind of green. That's how I feel. <laughs> you are the biggest liar I've ever seen <laughs> since you were nine years old. <laughs> Smith, the big boss. You're crazy. I don't carry a gun. I couldn't shoot anybody. Here's your gun. With one shell gone. You did it all right. I never saw that gun before. I don't remember a thing about it. Kill him? Not quite. Lee Garvin put you up to it, didn't he? No, he didn't. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't remember when I drank. About this room, he may be hiding in here. No, it's locked. Oh, he couldn't get in there anyway. Banks has one key, and I've got the only other one. You got it with you? No, it's over at my desk. We better go get it and take a look in here. What'll they do to me? That's up to you, ain't it, Roberts? What do you mean? Tell us everything you know about Garvin and we'll get you out of here safe and on the next freight up the valley. 
Well, how do I know you will? Maybe we better just turn him over to law. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll tell. But... But what? Well, they'll be back in a, with the key in a minute. Look, I took care of that. I have the other one. Better start talking. That freight's being made up now. You don't want to miss it. Oh, all right. All right. I met him up in Montana State Prison five years ago. Got up on manslaughter. Manslaughter? Tough egg, huh? No, just a kid. Seems he lost his temper and hit a guy. But it was a tough break. The guy he hit was a big politician's friend. Go ahead. Give me all the details. Well, it's like this. I, uh... Poppy? Did you find Lee? How is he? He didn't do it, did he? Where is he now? Now, one thing at a time, Jesse. First, Lee had nothing to do with the shooting. Oh, I knew it. He's hiding out until I locate a man I think can clear him. I'm so glad, and I'm sure you'll find him, and Lee and I can be together again. What's this I hear about you and Lee being together again? Now, Dad, listen to Hoppy. Tom, Lee didn't have anything to do with that attack on you. Well, you're wrong, and what's more, you've been on Garvin's side ever since you got here. Dad, please. Now, 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 anybody would think that you still had a soft spot for that good-for-nothing. I think you'll feel differently about Lee after I've located that hobo. I can't see why locating a hobo. But I want to talk to him about a couple of things that happened last night. And Tom, after that, will you let the boy come here and have a talk with you? Will you, Dad, will you? Oh, I suppose so. Good. Maybe we can make it tonight. Well, I'll be right here. Good. I'll see you later. Okay. Cassidy saw him. Watts talks now. We're in trouble. Cassidy may need help. Take it easy. I'm not going to bother you. I never shot anybody. It wasn't mine. They're lying. Who's lying? Well, them two railroaders that, that locked me up in the shack. Who were they? Well, one of them was... <coughs> Try to answer me. Was one of them Roberts? Are you all right, Cassidy? Thanks. We found the hobo. Good idea shooting. Wait, pull the gun on you. What are you talking about? He didn't even have one. Here it is. It was under it. Uh, you can save it for the coroner. He'll decide whose gun it is. I don't like your attitude, Cassidy. I'm sorry I bothered to help you. I'm not too happy about it myself. Come on, man. Let's go back to work. This is no side show. Come on. What are you trying to say? He's trying to say something. Who? What was the shot? Caught up with Watson Roberts, did a little sharpshooting on him. Did you have a chance to question him? No, he tied too quickly. One of the brakemen? They're talking to him. Hmm. Lee Garvin? Are you sure? They'd like for us to think they are, but they're not. The man's dead. Come on. I don't get what they're up to. I'd say that Roberts and Banks are going to frame the dying man's confession. Roberts? Yeah, I'm sure he's the one that's behind all this. Well, let's tell Lee. Well, you wouldn't dare. He'd lose his head and go gunning for Roberts. Yeah, but what'll we do? You just sit tight and don't say anything to anybody. I'm gonna get to Lee as quick as I can. It's Cassidy. Open the door. I want to talk to you. Did you 
find Watson? Yeah, I found him, but he couldn't talk. A, a bullet had stopped him. Just my luck. Who was it? I don't know. It could have been any one of a half a dozen. They were all looking for him. The bullet came over my shoulder. There goes my only alibi. Lee, you've only got one chance to convince Tom that you're on the level. I want you to go see him tonight. Tell him about prison and make a clean breast of the whole thing. He never listened to me. Turn me over the law the minute he saw me. No, that's where you're wrong. He's promised to listen to anything you have to say. He's waiting in his office for you now. Will you go? All right, I'll go. I wish you'd go with me. No, you better go alone. Keep it a family matter, huh? All right. Well, I'll be close by. here after all, eh? Yes, I I want to tell you something about that. Well, suppose you start by telling me why you sent your old cellmate Watts here last night to shoot me. But I didn't. That's a cooked up story. And so is the one about your jail term, I suppose. Well, that part of it's true. But I had... Save your breath. Here. What's that? The money you came here to hold me up for. Take it and get out. And if I ever hear of you coming near my daughter Wait again... Wait a minute. I don't want your money, and I had nothing to do with the shooting. I'll take a dying man's word for it. You mean Ben Watts? Yes. He confessed the whole thing before he died. He, he told them all about it. He told who? Well, he told... Why did you do that? He was reaching for a gun, wasn't he? No, he wasn't. My mistake, Chief. Sorry. Well, I should think so. I told you I didn't need any help with him. I had my own gun handy here. And another thing, Roberts, the boy was telling me... All about me? What are you doing? Turn that gun away. Are you insane? Not at all, Chief. You see, it all works out nicely. He threatened you. You drew this gun, he grabbed it, and killed her. Shot the chief. What is it? Dad! Garvin pulled the trigger just as I came in behind him. I was too late to stop him, but I knocked him out with... Where's Garvin? Well, there was nobody here but Tom and Jesse when I came in. But look, here's the club I knocked the killer out with. He must be around somewhere. Look for him. But be careful, he'll shoot on sight. Right. You said it was Lee? It was. Oh, no. He must be wrong, Hoppy. How could I be? But Lee would never hurt Father, would he? I'm sure he didn't, Jesse. But there's no way I can prove it now.
posses on the way over from the county seat. We'll have Garvin rounded up for sundown. Are those posse boys that good? Why, they know this country like the back of their hands. Well, what now, Huffy? That means we're going to have to find Lee before that posse does. They'll shoot him on sight. You figure he didn't do it after all, Hoppy? Of course he didn't, but we're going to have to find him in order to prove it. When do we start looking? We're going to Garvin's shack. You stay here in town and keep your eyes and ears open. We'll see you later. I am. I just came to pick up a few things. I'm going east tonight. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. This seems to be for you. It must have been stuck under the door. It's from Lee. He says he wants me to know that he didn't hurt my father. But that he can't prove it, and he has to stay hidden. But... But what? But he wants me to remember that I'm his wife. He'll never give me up. Jesse, why are you going east? Because there's nothing else to do. Dad didn't leave me any money, and our only relatives are back there. But he owned a controlling interest in the railroad. He used to, but he sold it last year for some reason. I know because Harmon showed me the transfer papers this morning. You mean Roberts bought it? Yeah, to help Dad. What about the oil land your father had in Oklahoma? I never knew of him having any. But I'm quite sure if he did, he would have told me about it. Well, weren't there any papers in the safe about it? No, there weren't. Harmon and I examined everything in there, but there was nothing about oil land. You're mistaken. I think you're the one that's mistaken, Jesse. I don't know what you're inferring, Mr. Cassidy, but Mr. Roberts has been very kind and sympathetic, and I'm sure that he knows much more about my father's affairs than anyone else could. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, Jesse. Maybe he knows too much about them. If you'll excuse me, I'm leaving. Where's she going? She says she's going east to stay. I figured she cared more about Lee than to run out on him like that. Oh, Roberts has got her pretty confused. Good news for you, Hoppy. What is it? Roberts and Bank just had a big row. Had a big row? What about? Something about money in the special train that Roberts ordered for him and Miss Jessie. Well, that's funny. She didn't say anything about him going east with her tonight. Ah, not tonight. Right now. As soon as she gets back to town with her clothes and things. Maybe it's just as well we didn't find Lee. I'd hate to give him that news. Well, nevertheless, we're going to find him. He left a note for Jesse on this card off a car consigned to the Dolomite Mine. Well, that's my writing. I nailed it on the car yesterday. Wasn't well, that the one they want to drop to the siding near the old mill? Yeah. They're going to bring mules down and haul the stuff up later. Well, that means that Lee's probably hiding out now. That old train's just about to start. Maybe if we head off across the desert, we can get to leave before it's too late. Yeah, I got an idea that might work. Hoppy, I forgot to tell you. Yeah? Robert's just taking along the marshal and the deputy for bodyguards. Well, never mind that now. Come on.
Get him up. Put your gun away. Lee, why did you run out after Tom was killed? What else could I do? One minute, Smith and I were talking friendly in the night. I got a bump in the head. I woke up on the floor. Smith was dead, and Roberts was outside yelling about me killing the old man. I got out and hid, and I've been hiding ever since. Now, well, that's about the way I had it figured. Now Roberts is on the train with your wife headed east. Roberts? Yeah, I haven't got time to explain the whole thing now, Lee, but he's the one who's been causing all your troubles. Well, stop that train and kill Wait a minute. That might be a good idea, but he's got the marshal and a deputy with him. You can't do it alone. You're trying to tell me you'll help me? If you do exactly as I tell you. I got in trouble last time doing that. Do you want help or don't you? I'll take a chance. All right, come on. Comes down. California, get down and throw that switch, but wait until you're sure the engineer can't stop outside. All right, but I don't like it. That's a holder. I don't like it any better than you do, but it's the only chance we got. Go on. He should stop about here. caught him for us, Cassidy. I'm very much obliged. What a dirty double-crossing deal. That's enough out of you, Garvin. Handcuff this killer, Marshal. Just a minute, Marshal. Here's the man the handcuffs belong on. Are you insane? What's this all about, Cassidy? I thought Garvin was the man we were after. I want you to arrest Roberts for forgery and the murder of Tom Smith. Tom Smith? Oh, now, wait a minute. Thanks has just turned state's evidence. Here's his confession. Lies. Everybody knows that Garvin shot him. I don't know. This sounds pretty convincing. He says that you killed Tom to get a hold of those oil land deeds. You forged a bill of sale on the railroad stock and forced him to help you. That dirty rat. He can't get clear by putting everything on me. He got his share of it. I can prove it. Yeah, you'll get your chance at the trial. Take him away, Clem. I owe you some thanks, Cassidy. And you too, Lee. I guess I've been barking up the wrong tree. I'm sure sorry. I, I can't blame anybody. Wait a minute, Lee. Jesse never did believe it. I'd better take that confession of Banks. Not that we'll be needing it legally. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Take a look at it. Why, this is only a bill of sale for some bar 20 cattle. <laughs> <laughs> Cassidy, you sure are an A number one bluffer. Put her there. <laughs> well, it worked anyhow. <laughs> I suppose you'll be starting back to break it. Yeah, well, I, I hope I will. No, indeed, he's fired. Well, I guess I had it coming to me. He's going to be too busy being vice president of our railroad. <laughs> now that you got it back for us, in spite of ourselves. Ah, uh, good luck to both of you. Thank you. I wish you'd stay on. No, we've been away from the ranch too long as it is. Goodbye. 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 Come on, fellas. Bye. 